The summer before I turned five, <clears throat> I decided I was capable of motherhood. The timing was perfect because there was a nest of bunnies in our neighbor's yard that lived up the street from us. Their daughter, who was eight, who was eight an adult by a four-year-old standard, told me I could take a bunny when it was old enough to leave its mother. I woke up early the next morning to claim my prize. The sun was barely rising as I toddled down the street, up my neighbor's lawn, and straight to the nest where the naked babies were cuddled. I made my choice and quickly ran home with my new baby. Beaming with pride, I went to my mom's room and woke her up to show her our newest family member. Her reaction was not what I expected. I was surprised and shocked by her confusion. Ever since I could remember, my mom's favorite animal was the rabbit. I guess it was five o'clock in the morning and her four-year-old daughter was standing at her bedside with a hairless creature in hand. Realizing what was happening, my mom leapt out of bed. Liza, where did you get this? How did it get in our house? What time is it? She told me I needed to show her exactly where I found the bunny, so I did. I took her to the front door, opened it up, and pointed to the welcome mat that lay on the ground just outside. She knew it wasn't the truth, got down on her hands and knees, and met my eyes with hers. Then she said those dreaded three words. Liza Jeanette Cohen. <laughs> it took about 20 minutes of my mom pleading with me to tell the truth before I finally conceded. Down the block we went to reunite mother and baby. The sun was becoming brighter, and there was my mom on her hands and knees putting this hairless bunny back in its nest. Just as she was getting the rabbit settled, a noise came from the house. There were our neighbors standing. There were our neighbors staring at us, hovering over their yard. My mother quickly stood up, straightening her oversized t-shirt and my father's boxer shorts that she always wore to bed. <laughs> Without missing a beat, she grabbed my hand, explained the situation, and apologized for the confusion. It wasn't until many years and many trips to the Humane Society later that I learned I was actually going to become a mother for the first time. This time it came as a complete surprise. My husband and I had zero plans of ever becoming parents. I was scared and unsure if I was capable of raising another human being. I could barely tie my own shoes, let alone keep a child alive. This time, I was the lost animal I brought home to show my mom. After hours of hashing the ins and outs of motherhood and children and every single fear I had ever had about becoming a mother, my mom knelt down and met me with tears in her eyes. Liza Jeanette Cohen, you are ready for this. This will be the best thing you have ever done in your life, said the woman who so desperately wanted to become a grandma. <laughs> you will be tired, you will be beaten, and your heart will ache at every scrape, bump, and pain your baby experiences. There will be times when you feel like you have figured out the secret to motherhood, and there will be times when a trip to the grocery store feels like a tropical vacation. But when your baby brings home a hairless bunny at five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you will get up, walk down the street in your husband's boxer shorts, and put the baby back in its nest. And yes, your neighbors will think you're crazy. She told me I would never regret bringing a child into this world. It was with that one statement that I knew I was ready and that I would not walk alone on this journey. Diego is now seven and a half years old. The summer of 2012, just before Diego turned five, my mom died very suddenly. There isn't much that I remember from those early weeks of grief. Mostly I remember the pain from my broken heart. I wasn't sure how I was going to navigate motherhood without my mom. Who would I call 10 times a day when I had a million and one questions? What was I going to do now that she was gone? Every morning I woke up and every night when I laid my head down to sleep, and all throughout the day, I would ask myself that question. The person who knew me better than I knew myself was gone. What would I do without her? About three weeks after my mom had passed, my two sons and I were coming home from running errands. It was one of those days where my sorrow ached throughout my whole body. I knew if I didn't do something normal, like go to the grocery store, I was going to be swallowed by my grief. I needed to be among the living, 
Plus, I was feeling guilty that my kids had been living on a diet of peanut butter sandwiches and popsicles. As I was unloading the groceries from my car, I heard Diego shriek with excitement. He came running up to me with a light in his eyes. Mommy, please, oh please, can we keep them? He was fiercely pulling my arm, leading me to our backyard. Mommy, look, a bunny nest. I saw the fur-covered hole, and thanks to my mom, I knew exactly what to do. Thanks.